Okay guys, I want to show you exactly how I tie on my leader from beginning to end. So I'm going to start with the fly line here, and this fly line has a looped connection, and I'm going to grab the standard 9 foot 3x leader that I use. Uh, I use the one that's from the catch and the hatch, but you can use pretty much any standard one. It's fine if it's tapered, it's fine if it's not. All you need here is about 5 feet of line. I use these because I have them readily available, and I like the loop because it makes it easy for me. So what I do here is once you got about five feet of your monofilament line, this is just extending the length of your leader, I go ahead and do a loop-to-loop -loop connection. The way that I do that is I take the fly line and put it through the loop of the leader, and then I make a little pinch here with my leader, pinch the loop like that, and I put that through the fly line loop. And then I just start to pull. And as I pull, the tag in is going to come right through. Whoop. My uh, cider leader got caught in that. Ignore that. And it pulls right through. Might have a little. There we go. There. Then once that pulls through, now the lines are connected, and all you got to do is pull them tight. And you might have to just push it just a little bit over that knot, and then the two loops will connect. Perfect, just like that. So then that's good here. And then you straighten out. So you got your fly line here, and then I've got about five feet of just standard monofilament line. Tape it or not, I really don't think it matters at all in this scenario. Then at the end here uh, is a tippet ring. I went ahead and tied this on ahead of time because they're a pain in the butt to tie on. And I'm just going to show you real quick what that looks like. So you grab the tippet rings here. Uh, these are two millimeter ones. And the trick is here is when you're going to tie it on is to leave it on this. So go ahead and get your line. And actually, you know, you'll go through and you'll run it through one of those tippet rings. And then you do your improved clinch knot, tie it off so it's all said and done, and tie it off to the, to the uh, uh, leader. And then you'll come over here and unhook it. That makes it a lot easier because otherwise you try to unhook it and mess with that little thing. It falls all over the place. It's hard to hold on to. So it's better just to do it first and get it on the line and then pull it off. Also make sure that depending on which way this thing is sitting for this here, See, it only unhooks on this right side for me, or it'll be either side, doesn't matter, but it only unlocks on one side. Make sure you do the tippet ring that's closest to, so that way you don't have to take off all the other tippet rings and then thread it back on. It's a pain. So do that frontmost one. And you're going to tie a tippet ring on to the leader, and then while you've got your tippet ring out, your tippet rings out, I use my cider line. And the cider line here, the little fly on it, get out of there. The cider line. Uh, we'll go over in just a second, but that's also going to have a tippet ring right here at the end. So the entire setup for me has two tippet rings. So once you've got your tippet ring onto your uh, tapered leader, now you're ready to tie on your siding indicator line. I use this stuff here. It's a two-tone indicator, 2X uh, by Rio. And what's nice about this is every, um, oh, it says it on here somewhere. Every eight inches or so, as you see here, it starts off with like a, a fluorescent pink that turns a little red and then turns to green. And then every, I'd say about every eight inches or so, I believe, it changes color, right? So the benefit of that is once you tie these two together, is this is going to be how you regulate your depth, okay? And how you know where your depth is. So I take this here, it's a little tippet ring, and I tie it on. This is just like tying on a, uh, a fly. There's really no different here. You're just putting it right through the eye. That's all a tippet ring is. It's pretty much just the eye of a hook. And I do a little improved clinch knot. And I try to, when I'm done, I like to, I make this a little long. I try to have this end with a specific color and not have like a little bit of tag in left over. That's just something I do. You certainly don't have to. So the way I do my, my knots is just one, two, three, four or so times around, four to five maybe. Then I take the tag end here. I put it through this little loop that I made from the twists, and then I've made another loop here, right? So I'm going to come back around and in. I believe this is called the improved clinch knot. And you put it through that, and then you pull down. It's good to knot it, uh, wet it, so I'm going to do that real quick. Just keeps it from kinking. And then, if it's a little broken up like that, it's no problem. You can just kind of take it and slide it down with your fingers. It'll tighten. Give it a good pull. This is 2x against probably, you know, 20 pound test up here, so it's no problem. 
nip off the tag end. I'm good to go. Doesn't have to be that neat, right? Like, because this is pretty high up on your on your rig. Um, you can trim it up a little bit more if you want to get, uh, you know, really precise about it. Because it, this is going to go through your guidelines from time to time on your fly rod. So you want to make sure that's covered. So now, to recap real quick, we've got our fly line connection here. And then we got about five feet of leader. And then we've got Mr. Tippet Ring. Bloop. I got a little hung up there. Not used to doing this on the, uh, not on the river. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. A little spun around. It's fine. So then you got Tippet Ring number one right here. And then you've got your mono, and then you got your uh, side indicator line. For, I did um, two arm lengths for me. I could probably measure it out, but I like to do. I don't like to do, like a precise measurement of something like inches or things like that, because when you're out on the water, you don't have a ruler. I know that my arm and my, I, you know, I'm about five ten, so I know that if I were to do from arm to arm, I'd be working with about five feet, and so I do one arm length all the way out. And then I'd come across to about my other shoulder. So that's probably about three and a half to four feet of that indicator line. Okay? And then at the bottom of that indicator line is another tippet ring. Okay? And that's it. Now at this point, you're going to tie on either 3x, 4x, 5x, or 6x tippet, or 7, or whatever is uh, diameter tippet that you want. And I've selected 5x just for this, but what I like to do is there's, there's two tips. If you're going to fish one fly, then put on the tippet that you want. If you're going to fish two flies, you want to taper down your tippet. So let's say I want to do 5x, then on my second fly, I'm going to want to do 6x. And the reason to do this is, at least for me, if I get hung up or if I break off on that bottom fly, I won't lose all of my flies. I'll just lose that bottom one. Um, the, it kind of creates different places that if it's going to break, it breaks strategically, so I lose less flies. So just a little tip. You guys can do that if you want. It can't all be the same, but um, I like to do it differently. So again here, nothing more than just this improved clinch knot. There's that. And I make one, two, three, four. There you have it. Set up again, no problem. And now I've got, there I did about, just for this example's purpose, now about like 12 inches. But yeah, I'd probably do somewhere between 12 at the least and 24. People always ask a lot of times, doesn't the cider line spook the fish? I've never had a case that I've purposefully noticed where I feel like it's spooking the fish. Um, a strike indicator is going to do a lot more as far as uh, spooking the fish without hits the water, moves through the water, and all of that. So uh, I never have an issue with it. So, I mean, sometimes I'm going to have 12 inches of line on here, right? But I'm going to have, I'm going to be fishing with all of this cider indicator down and in the water. For me, that's okay. I haven't spooked any fish or had any issues with it. I do think you want to try and keep this to be kind of your bottom point. And so that is kind of your minimum depth. But... You can go a little bit deeper if you need to, if you're fishing, you know, if you get to an extremely deep hole that you're not quite rigged for, uh, it's fine to just go ahead and, you know, let that get down in the water. The fish don't seem to mind. Okay? So then, at this point, you're going to tie on a fly. You got a little fella right here. These guys from, this guy comes from my Euronymph assortment. It's one of the black stone flies that's in there. It's a killer bug. Works really good, especially year-round. It really does work well in winter, too, oddly enough. Oops, sorry, wasn't in that shot there. So I'm just tying this on again. Improved clinch knot. So I'm doing all the way down, all the knots, all the deal. You guys pretty much get the drift at this point, so we're not going to do much more. You guys should know how to tie on a, a fly. If not, there's a million videos online on how to tie a fly onto a hook, and that's all I'm doing here. But let me show you one last tip that I think is very beneficial. So I've got one fly on here now. So now to tie on my next fly, because I typically fish two to three flies, I do something a little bit unique. I do, there you go. So I take my uh, next uh, tippet here. So let's just say I got a little bit here. And I go ahead and you can run it 
I just pinch it with my fingers. And this is like when you tie on like a dropper a lot of times. This is the this is the knot that is commonly done. And it's the same thing, it's an improved clinch knot. You're just not tying it onto a hook or anything yet. So three or four times in, through the little loop that you made. You just pretend that the hook eye is already in there, that's already threaded through the hook eye, and then you're good to go. Then, what I've done here is I made a little loop, right? And then what I'll do is I'll take this fly, and here's what I do that's, that's really nice. I take this and I thread it through the whole fly and get it up onto the line. Uh, this one will be a little harder to do. There we go. Now it's on the line, right? So this is also why I taper down on tippet from hook to hook, or uh, from fly to fly, because when I tighten this down, you want that to be 4x onto 5x line. And here's the beauty of this. Then this cinches right onto here, and yeah, it makes a little bit bigger of a mess up on the front, but again, never had the fish care or notice um, or you know complain otherwise. So it's not a problem at all. What's nice about this is now let's say I tie on another fly to you know my tag and way down here or something. Now I've got two flies on. And for some reason, I want to change this fly. It's not working, needs to do better, or something like that. All I have to do is grab this fly, grab the, the tag end up here, or tag the, uh, sorry, the other tag end that's on the bottom, but that'd be on your next fly, and you can just pull it away and drag it up here. And you do so gently. Um, you can just do it right like that. You can break this fly off, tie on a new one, and then when you're done, just pull that tag in back down and it cinches right down onto the fly again. So this allows you to change out any fly, be the top, middle, bottom, or anything in between flies on your rig without having to retie everything all at once, um, which is really nice because I know you've all, we've all kind of dealt with that and it's a pain. This is my solution to it and I've never had anything break off. I can pull on that really hard, by the way. I mean, I'm going to cut myself if I pull on that any harder and it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't break off like you would think it would. Um, it, it holds on really well. Um, it's nice and nice and strong, and it creates a very modular setup for you to switch up your flies. In addition to this, another nice tip that you can do, and I don't have it sitting here with me. I'll show it to you guys in the in the live video. Um, right here, where you're attaching your tippet onto your flies, you can pre-build everything from here down and put it on these little tippet spools, or put it onto these little. Uh, foam pieces that I have. There's little rigging setups or rigging holders, and you can wrap it around there and set up three different rigs. So you could do a you know, squirmy worm and a stone fly for more of a searching pattern to start out with the beginning of the day, or then you get to a more imitative setup as well and build that out. Uh, you could do really either or and have them both set up. So then when you get onto the river and you're ready to fish, all you got to do is unravel all of that, all that line, and then you kind of pinch and hold that line and you pull it between your fingers and pull, and that'll straighten it out. Sometimes it can get a little bit of uh, a memory in it. You just pull to straighten it out, and that'll loosen it up quite a bit and straighten it out for you. And then you just tie on that, that top part right onto your tippet ring, and you've got all three, two, one, two, or three of your flies all rigged, ready to go on the river. Then let's say 10 minutes in, you're not having success, you want to switch up your entire rig, take that tippet ring, take it off right there, and then retie on you know, your new rig that you've already pre-set up and pre-made the knots for and pre-tied on, and you tie it on. So you can switch out two flies and three flies, and you can have three, four, five, six different rigs set up, and it makes it super easy for you to uh, switch up flies. So if you, you know, guessed wrong at first, or all of a sudden you start seeing there's a different hatch, or you, you know, use your bug saying um, from, you know, the, uh, from the entomology course that we teach, you can access, you know, you can find what you're going to be fishing then, and you can switch out flies like five times faster. Saves you a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of tying time and stuff like that. So those are all my leader setup and tips. That's what I recommend. I know a lot of people do tag ends off of here. I would just tie straight on and that's it. I just tie straight onto here. I just do straight lines all the way down. Uh, I never seem to have any issues or need for, you know, tying a tag end off. Now, I know other people, uh, James, I know is going to be doing this course with us. He's got a whole different setup. So it's good to kind of learn and know both. But I want to show you guys mine in this uh, quick video because it's a little bit easier to do than when you're doing like a, an actual Zoom class. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and we'll get back to the class now. Thanks.